I mean, they did it in different ways in the second half, but Mamadi and Kyle both gave you a, a spark, I thought, a, a lift. Uh, doing it in different ways, how do you think both those guys kind of contributed to that and got you guys going after a little bit of a sluggish first half? Yeah, I thought our impatience offensively um, affected us because it's a good offensive team. In Yale, they scored 98 against Washington and then um, 89 against Lehigh. And so um, our... Our offense was a little quick. We took, you know, some of those were good shots early, but we weren't willing to break them down and, and get the good looks, um, which I thought kind of bled into it. But defensively, when we settled down offensively, and then Mamadi made some high-level plays, it, the rim protection. I mean, he made a couple blocks that just, you know, he's off the floor. He got two in a row. Obviously, it brought the crowd to its feet. It, it energized us, but he covered a couple maybe breakdowns we had defensively, and then all of a sudden he bothered the ball, or he he just shut a couple people down with his ball screen defense, which was important for us. Then Kyle coming off some screens, hitting some shots. Um, you know, this is a team that was asked last time. It's, it's going to have to be different guys, different times in the balance. So they both gave us a, a real nice lift, and I think our intensity picked up defensively. But um, but for the most part, we were solid defensively. And then our offense started, I, I hope, warmed down a little bit, and we outlasted them. Obviously, Mary Al's not starting, getting a lot of minutes, doing a lot of scoring for you. What, what do you like about him in that role? He, I think he brings, just like we were talking about Mamadi and Kyle, how they brought life and energy off the bench. I think um, that um, Mariel, you know, brings obviously a scoring punch. He plays real hard. Uh, he's in a, in a hard playing defender. And offensively, he's aggressive. And uh, I like that. Again, you could easily start a number of guys with this group. But um, Mariel has really done a good job and brought some life when we've needed it. And I thought he, um, once again, got some stuff going for us. And the, the minutes were pretty evenly distributed. But um, and that right now, that role is good. And you know he's playing at the right times. Uh, Tony, in the wake of uh, dismissal, how important now is it for Mariel to step into a uh, a bigger, larger role, and Mamadi or Marielle. I mean Mamadi, and okay. uh, also, um, can you just talk about how fast he gets up and and his ability to get up right. and block shots? Yeah, I think you know we have right now, and, and we're probably gonna we'll see about with Jay Huff, the red shirt, and you know, all those things come into play. But we have four, you know, quality guys that play that forward spot, and you know Jared, Jack, Isaiah, and Mamadi. They're all going to have to get more, be more ready and have more opportunities to play. Probably Mamadi. Um, I think Isaiah is pretty established, but those other three guys will find themselves with more chances. Mamadi may be the most because he's young, but you see his upside. And I thought he gave us that spark that uh, Andrew asked about that was obvious. You know, you just don't find Darion Atkins. Um, I'm trying to think of a quick, real quick jump or second jump, quick jump. Um, guys like that with Mamadi, and that's that's huge because defensively, you can't be perfect position every time. When you got a guy behind that can block some shots and and uh, clean up some things, that's good. So I I think that his uh, development, his maturity, and all those things through the course of the year will be uh, very important for us, and will help him a lot uh, in light of having one less player, not having Austin in the in the interior mix. Tony, how would you quantify? Obviously, defensively it matters, but how would you quantify how you have to kind of adjust offensively when you don't have that go-to guy to dump the ball into and you have a bunch of kind of works in progress? Yeah, I think that's a work in progress too. I, I think you you got to run your offense well. you got to take the shots from there. You still have to throw it inside, and hopefully guys will improve. But, um, you know, that's that's was something we thought we had, and now we don't, so we adjust and see. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought Jack gave us a nice lift, did some good things. Um, and we'll see all different kinds of teams and just have to be ready for it. Probably at times have to look at playing four guards. Um, but that presents some, some challenges for sure. And we'll just keep adjusting. Uh, could you elaborate on where you are with the Jay Huff situation? Yeah, just he, you know, he's, we said when he originally redshirted, you know, Jay and DeAndre both made it hard because you could make a case for them playing. And um, with Jay, we said, let's just see what happens. And I think. The plan still is to keep him on the red shirt. We'll discuss this a little more um, because the strength factor for him, if he can really have a great year of strength and development, I think that will be key. Um, but if a situation arises, it might be something we have to revisit, whether there's an injury or he continues to develop. But I don't want to hamper his ability to get real strong this year. And sometimes when you're 
not playing, you can get an extra lift, you can do things. And you can even do that while you're playing. But I think it's, I think we're in the right place with it right now, but it's just something we have to keep our eye on. Tony, obviously you'll have a better idea after watching tape of this, but how would you characterize how the Kyle and the young guys are, are kind of doing what you want defensively? You've obviously put up good numbers, but you know when you break it down. Yeah, I think some habits are still being formed. Um, they're, they're smart players. Um, and I think, you know, we have to be so good positionally. And, and sometimes the, the young guys don't understand how I say this a lot, how continuous they have to be. The ball moves bang. They got to be in the next spot. They got to be down. They got to be ready. And quite honestly, sometimes our, our veterans don't always grasp that the way it's needed. As I said, it's mandatory how we have to play to be as good as we can. But every time you go into a game, it's an optional decision if you want to do it. It's voluntary on their part. So the young guys, I think, are getting a grasp of it. Um, as the competition continues to step up, it'll be even, there'll be more of a premium. But um, for the most part, they've, I think, done a good job. And then again, if you have some shot blocking behind you, that, that also covers some of their mistakes. But my hope is that they'll be more um, anticipatory as opposed to reactive. Doug. Clearly, you're a man of focus, but can you talk about the stress you've been under the last couple of days with this Austin situation? Yeah, no, you just, you never want as a coach, um, you don't want to have to do hard things uh, unless you think it's the right thing for your team and for a, a young man involved. And, um, you know, I, it's, it's just one of those situations where uh, we always talk about, you know, there's a standard we have, um, certainly showing compassion and grace. Uh, but there's also accountability and truth that comes with every situation. And in this case, that's that's how we de dealt with it, with Austin. I love Austin. Um, my hope is that this will, you know, um, be a turning point for him and he'll take the right steps. And um, basketball is not a part of it here at Virginia. So my hope is that he'll take those steps. But it's always hard. Um, you're... Um, a father talks about a father disciplines his children. His fathers, you all know that. Sometimes you have to do that, but um, but it's a chance for the guys in the program now to to tie it tighter and come together. And uh, we always talk about that. So uh, that's the stuff you don't like about coaching, but it's the necessary stuff that uh, is far more impactful and lasting to the guys in your program. Those decisions you make uh, to hopefully make a difference in the big picture. And I got, I don't have it all figured out. I made so many mistakes in my own life, but I'm hoping that um, we're doing the right things, the wise things for Austin's case, for the young men in our program, and that we'll keep taking the right steps forward. But um, I just want to hopefully lead lead them well and, and our staff and and go forward. But yeah, not not easy, not at all. Been hard for sure. In that second half, we talk about Kyle and Mamadi, but London seemed early on got into the lane, created some easy buckets for you where you hadn't been scoring a lot in that first half. How important was that to kind of get things settled down? He had three assists in the yeah. first two, three minutes. Yeah, he had seven points, uh, seven assists, zero turnovers. And, you know, maybe, yes, the question, okay, we don't have as much of a post-presence scoring inside. Well, ways you combat that is at least get into the paint off the dribble and then make some plays where there's finishing opportunities. And I thought London did a good job and the other guys. We said, look, we got to try to touch the paint off of either our screens where we're curling off and then get in there and make the plays. Marielle got in there and missed some, but when you can dent the defense, and that's what we try to not allow in our defensive system, look, make them play on the perimeter, but when you can touch the paint, post feeds, post moves, drives, um, plays from there, it's really important for our offense. And I thought we started establishing that, especially after the ball rotated side top side, and then all of a sudden we got in there and then they had to go to some zone. I don't know if they just did that because they were wearing down. Um, they have some young guys too, so they're they're growing in this process. But paint touches were really important, and London got us going. Tony, catch and shoot, feet not square, all that stuff. Not often a popular way for a coach to see a guy shoot. Kyle seems to have the ability, no matter where he is, to kind of, you know, some of those shots he took didn't look like what you would want to show your in a, in a camp, but. Does yeah. he have a special ability to no, kind of do that? No, I played with Dell Curry when I was with the Hornets. And I always remember Dell. You know, we he always talk about we would use the term fight for your feet. But Dell was one of those shooters. Um, you know, if he could just get his elbow on line, just, you know, whether sometimes your feet, you try to get your feet set, you try to get your body square. Reggie Miller was like this. But if you could just get that elbow at the rim, um, and maybe you have to rotate a little bit in the air at times. You know, you work on trying to be set and ready so you're going up straight. 
but certain guys can do that, and he, you saw that. He has that ability, and we think he's a real good fit for what we do offensively is getting him off those screens and, and coming off quick with a, a shooting or a hunting the shot mentality. So, um, And he, he kind of elevates and knows how to fall away. That's stuff that is natural. You see that in London sometimes. You saw that in Joe Harris at times. Um, I coached a guy at Washington State named Clay Thompson. You know, I'm not saying, oh, Kyle's there, but just those there's guys I could do that as a player where you can fly off and you just know you can rotate in the air and you got to get a good look because sometimes that's the best you can get with good defenses. Does he have a special quick release? He has a yeah, quick release bounce. Um, so that's that's real important, I think. And we work on those things. But he watching him in high school, that's why I liked what I saw. Boy, he fits flying off those screens because that's a, a lost art, I think, in today's game.